What's up everyone? Hope everyone's having a great day. Today we get to start on our convertible 300ZX. So for those of you who may not know, we actually have spoke with a collision repair guy and he's gonna help us fix our slick top. But to fix that, instead of paying him, we're gonna put this together with a manual transmission, motor, get everything running, put together, nice vert, without the top obviously. And he's gonna take it on trade to fix our slick top. So we're actually going to start the process of putting all this back together. I think our main focus is gonna be whatever in the engine bay that we can manage. We're also likely gonna grab another door, dash, and start to install some things back here to start to bring this car back together today. If we don't get to the wheel wells, we'll definitely get the wiring harness sorted, all of the engine bay, and start the interior. I was actually out here cleaning for like eight hours yesterday. Not how well you guys can tell, but we actually got plenty of room to walk compared to normal. But this thing was my downfall yesterday. Intro clip is actually us about to head to the chiropractor. I, I just had to pick this thing up and move it and I threw my back out yesterday. Slept like absolute crap last night. And plus, this is a good excuse to go the next town over and finally get that alignment that we need. Let's go do that. <laughs> I accidentally tooted the horn on that one, but we actually just got out the chiropractor. I went in there seven minutes early and now I'm out when I was supposed to be in there. The best $38 I've ever spent. Now actually let's go over to Tire Barn and see if they can align our car. Off to Tire Barn. Well, it looks like Tire Barn doesn't want any business. I try to give them the benefit of the doubt since they're never busy and you know, just to be someone to give them business. Tire Barn's literally $20 more. And I'm like, hey, I'll give you guys business. I'll start coming here like type of thing go in there there's no one there and they're like oh sorry we're booked out the whole day that's usually something we do by appointment well go down to bell tire and they're like oh yeah we'll get you in at three o'clock okay bet <laughs> let's head back home and get started on the z before we got to come back to our appointment here's our big pile of all the parts that we have actually pulled off the vert and just so happens to be here on the bottom of the table this is the wiring harness. So we have to find something for all of this just to get our wiring harness out. Uh, hopefully we don't damage anything in the process. Probably not my best idea here. Now we got our wiring harness all out. You want to take this corner and start to feed it through down here, your little harness area. So I say start over here first because you can get your fuse box mounted up and then you can snake that little bit through down here and up along here down and into the uh, chassis part because this side is actually the more I don't know intense one to plug in down to the fuse box down there in the driver kick panel this side has a lot less plugs is much easier to figure out so if we start from the harder side first we'll be good to go Since we got this little broken stud and a stud here, we can actually mount this kind of where it needs to be. Now these two up here, you'll bolt down and have your wiring harness run up here. And these, as you can see where it really wants to go, has a little pop, little grommet there. This mounts right there. Hood switch, steering rack, ABS. And before we really work on this side, we'll just pull this out the way since that's kind of the annoying part. Now let's just get the rest of this in. Now before we do this corner, we will do this one. Kind of follow all these spots. It also helps if you uh, document this before you take it all apart. Before we mount this, let's snake this part down and out. So that way we can actually have everything fit right. You don't want to kink and twist your wiring harness. You want it to lay the way that it sat in the car. use all these little zip ties and let's re-secure these clips to the radiator support 
just like that. Now this is technically all of our automatic wiring that we won't be using. So we may tuck this down here, but for now, we'll just leave it. As for this, you have a piece here and a piece here that both actually thread in right here on your lower radiator support. I feel like I've given you guys a good enough gist of this, so let's go ahead and start to kind of just route everything back and plug it and remount it where it belongs. If all goes well, obviously. And we managed to get it into this wheel well, or I guess the cabin, and we've got it all tied up here. Everything else is all hooked up. Honorable mention, there's one ground here, one ground over here. Happy that this all actually went in good. I was actually kind of afraid that it wasn't, because when you take this stuff out, it just seems like it's not, I don't know, it just seems like you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole. But it went together a lot better than it came out. I'm super happy with that. Now, as soon as we get back from our alignment appointment, we can work on getting both of these done on the side, get this fuse box all mounted back up, and then we can move on. We just left Bell Tire, and I actually had a pretty sick experience here. The whole time, I'm kind of paranoid that they're not gonna be able to drive stick, yada yada. Well, I actually had the alignment dude come back and tell me that he can't align my car because it's got a lot of play and it's all out of whack. He actually took me back and showed me why. He actually showed me like how I can check for the play in my suspension, and I found the play in my upper control arms, plain as day. But we're actually gonna go put those AMS ones on. Yeah, I know, I don't want to, but here we are. And we're going to go back and hopefully get this thing all set up. I guess we're changing control arms right now instead of getting into a uh, convertible, sorry probably not going to be able to see it too well i mean you can see it all cracked out on the outside but that's about all i can see put the new ones on same thing so we did go ahead and reinstall this side oh there they are we got them bad boys in and we've actually spent like the last 45 minutes trying to fix a thread on one of these adjusters so these little guys this one was absolutely mangled instead of like all nice like this one like it was completely folded over halfway. So I had to chisel it out, take a drill to it, clean it up, and then hammer a smaller size into it. And it works now. Now I guess, let's see what we can do about slapping these in. Yeah, I think that's how they go. Got both of them on now. Slight casualties, a couple of hands, a couple injuries. Now let's get this wheel back on. These square G33s are insanely light for those of you uh, interested in these things. Not only do they look amazing on Zs, I guess let's head back to uh, get our alignment done. Well, you can say our homemade alignment was definitely not good. We went ahead, all we did was set the toe. My adjustable control arms are kind of funky. We couldn't really adjust them. Uh, so I got to kind of readjust those, clean it up and get it to where it can actually be aligned correctly. So I do know when I was on the way over here, the car was driving significantly better, a lot straighter, wheel wasn't flopping and shaking. Well, it's actually been a whole day since the chiropractor. I had to really chill out the following day because it's like it hurt way worse for me to heal back up. This morning I'm feeling good. I finally slept a little bit last night. We did just manage to sit in here for probably an hour. We got all of our fuse box back in. Let's just say everything pretty much goes exactly where it needs to. You got connectors that connect on the side of the box, the bottom, and the far side. Before you put your top side on, run your hood prop because that's kind of just how it's designed to go. And also the top side of the back has to come through the bracket at the top. Struggled with that for a little bit, had to take it in and out probably about five, six times. And now we can move forward. Um, I think we'll start with the throttle pedal or the gas pedal, whatever. And then we will move on to the brake and clutch. Pedal is actually like a two part system. You just feed this all through up here. And then there will be just two 10 mils to mount. Pretty sure this stopper here goes on the bottom because that will be there for the pedal itself. Now the pedal itself will mount right here. I'll actually have a fork that connects up here by this bushing. And that plastic piece goes like that. It may be a good time to go ahead and throw this brake booster in. Take off our hardware. Looks like I installed it so we don't lose it. 
Also, our clevis thing should be good to reinstall. Keyword should be <laughs> tight fit. Take the hardware and our brake pedal. So what I noticed about this brake pedal is as soon as I plug this thing in, it's going to have brake lights on. If you look right here, there are no pedal bushings and that is not telling the car that there is the brake pedal depressed and whatnot. So what we're gonna do the cheap way is we're gonna put a bolt and a nut through this so we don't have to pay $10 for three plastic grommets because there's actually one on your clutch pedal as well. So we go from this to that. On the head, just put a nut on the back, got them all snugged up, now it should work fine. Now, as you push your brake pedal back on, you have to make sure that you line up the fork from your brake booster to allow it to go on your pedal. Make sure you still got room to get your 12 mil bolt up in the top. It looks like our switches are not making contact with the brake pedal, so we actually have to loosen up that nut, thread them in to where they do make contact, and then snug them down. Can we get the steering column in without removing the brake pedal? Shaft's in now. Okay. Good. Gee whiz. Sorry, I don't know how much of that we caught, but... What I'm a little concerned with right now is how far the steering wheel goes back. I don't feel like that looks accurate at all. Granted, we won't know where to mount this until we get the dash bar back in, but oh, good. I'm super glad we found out we can install that with the brake pedal in place. Turn signals and stuff are all hooked up. I say we move on to doing the engine bay right now because really we're pretty much ready to put the heater core and dash and stuff back in. However, I don't want to do that until I get this door on so I can just hook it up and wire it all together and be done with it. Can't believe how much this is starting to look like a car again and just a little bit of work that we've done. I did go ahead and throw this cruise control on. It's just got two 10 mil bolts to hold it on. You know, I completely forgot about it. Let's just go ahead and put this clutch pedal in. It's just got these two right here and then you got a 12 mil up at the top. And you'll also mate your slave cylinder at the same time so you can have it line up to your pedal bushing. With the pedal in, which you see we got the studs poking through, we're ready to put the master cylinder in. So you always want to make sure you get your forks lined up straight so that way you can actually hug the clutch pedal. And usually you can see it through that top access hole if you are an NA. And slide it on. And if you can, thread one of these on to keep it positioned. And if you can see right there, we're actually on the clutch pedal so we can actually mount that clevis pin right there. Well, I actually found this box that I forgot that I had, but I put pretty much all like the little stuff in. So we may as well just go ahead and put a lot of this stuff back. Honestly, once we're done with this box, everything's really going to be coming together. I do need to go find a cow for this real quick. Then we can install our wipers back. We also just hooked up the brake booster. We got all the electronics over here sorted out. So pretty much our wiring harness is all done. But as long as it's inside the bay and doesn't come here into the wheel well, we're good to go. Even though these are cut, doesn't mean it can't go at least down into a... One more down. Good thing we got all of our hardware right here. Fuel lines are done. Other than the hard lines, obviously. We're going to wait till we finish the underbody for that because we have to. Probably a good time to go ahead and take care of this cow. Found it. Okay, there we go. Let's go find all of our clips and resecure it. Got those both on. So I turned out it's not actually keyed. I thought these were keyed to where you put them on. They just kind of have like a lock washer thing on them, like where they're indented to where it grabs. And you just kind of set them, and when you torque it, you kind of just set where they go. Threw our brake booster hose on, and this little bracket actually goes right here. We also have these little pieces that actually go in here for our wiring harnesses. Cap in. I know you guys ain't going to be able to see, but trust me, it's there. Probably better to just put our power steering in over ahead. Power steering, hard line, everything is all in. I think we're actually going to go ahead and throw some headlights in this. Just because I have some laying around, I'm honestly sick of moving them around everywhere. Now I think we found the right headlight to fit in here. Hopefully. Uh, hey, there we go. 
And now for our second one. Will it fit? Sweet. All right, both headlights are in. We're kind of looking like a car. So if I remember correctly, this should be the driver's side. And these two both come down to a little junction box there in the passenger side wheel well. So now it's just a matter of finding where everything mounts. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, you can't see too much. I'm charging my secondary light and let's just say the light's not penetrating well enough here. But it looks like we may be able to thread these back in. If we can just get these started and kind of get them centralized where they need to be, then we can start to fit the rest of the hard lines here on the firewall. Tighten these up so that we don't forget when it comes down to actually putting all this together and bleeding the brakes. Now that that's all secured, we can just move these lines about over here, about where they'll need to go before we undercoat. We're actually starting to run out of things to do here. That's a very good problem to have. Let's go check our parts bins. Let's see what else we're missing. Hood prop rod is a pretty simple one. Ha ha. Yep. Oh, we just found this battery harness or starter harness. Put your ground through here. Hook your ground up to your firewall. And then we will connect this white accessory power for the car over here to our power cable. And that is what powers the cabin of the Z. Now, honestly, I think it's probably time that we are all done with here on the front of the car, at least. I think we may try to go source and figure out our door to put on this so then we can get to putting the rest of the interior back in and making this thing a car again. Now, if we're going to go put this door back on, we actually have to finish the door up a little bit. And that is put the mirror back on it so that way it's actually a fully functioning door and once we put it on everything's just plug and play we will need to get a window amplifier and a door handle which i did take off of the other door so this thing should be all good to go set harness in main priority then set your mirror now that the mirror's on we actually need to remove it from right here so that way we can mount it on the other one because I actually left my hinges on the car. Sure enough. Well, it's at least latched. That's probably about as good as we're gonna get. Now we just gotta lift this thing up while we thread in some bolts. Now we just got to meticulously tighten all of these down, try to get the alignment right, and just get the door to sit it where we want. It's not perfect, but it works. I'm happy with it. Let's keep moving. And your door harness connectors are these two right here. That bottom one plugged in, and the other white brick that's right on top of it. Actually, I think this is a perfect time for us to go ahead and maybe go grab something to eat. Let's go upstairs, ask Gabby what she thinks. And we'll be right back. Well, I'd be lying if I said time didn't get away from us. It's like 11 at night, almost 12 right now, but we still need to get some stuff done. We did manage to find our heater core, our AC box, and our blower motor. So I think we're gonna go ahead and start installing those. So you always start with your heater core, the blower motor, and then your EVAP box because your EVAP box actually slides in to both of them. So if you ever fight in them, that's probably why. Yeah, don't be like me and let all that water run out. You may need to give it a couple love tabs to get it going into place. You'll have three spots like this and down there for some 10 mils like this. I actually think now is gonna be a good time that we actually go ahead and get the tray down here to bolt in with all these last little electric components. And we got it all plugged in. That definitely got our arms tired. I'm not sure if this piece right here may need to be back behind this. I just feel like it would look a little nicer, but I don't think it's entirely gonna matter. Kind of like this transmission connector. That's just gonna make it look ugly down here too. Your air access is right up here. So 
so this we can actually <laughs> dump some crud out. When you push it up there hard enough, it'll just pop there. Then you can thread the bolt in the top and it's all mounted. It gets pretty easy to sit down here and fight yourself on some stuff. So any tips and tricks to make it go together easier or simpler. Now let's install the AC evaporator cord. Same concept goes here. Get it roughly in place. Get your two studs located at the bottom. And you have a stud up here at the top that makes it a little bit simpler to install. Plug in our assorted wiring, which will all start to make sense where it goes, I think. Maybe time to go ahead and install our dashboard. That's uh, pretty self-explanatory. You got two studs over here. You got your brackets down here in the middle that bolt to it. Two steering column bolts. Two parts up here. And then you have your three over on the driver's side A-pillar area. That one is going to be a major pain in the butt to film. Get installed. So let's just throw it in. Dash bars installed. Steering wheels all uh, at least mounted up. Got the heater stuff all hooked up. We are at a stopping point for the night. I slacked a little bit when I hurt my back and I need to make it up to you guys. So we'll catch you in the morning. Well, we managed to get the HVAC all in and now we've got all of our parts pretty much for the interior. Got the dash ready. So it's time for us to start putting this thing together. Once you get the dash in place, and you got all of your wiring harnesses fed through, and you just clip it into place. I believe there's three across the top. If not, there's at least two on each corner. Now we can begin putting our three bolts up here in the dash, and then start to put everything else in. I won't bore you guys with it again. I feel like I do this every video. Got everything in. With the exception of a couple things, I haven't found the correct radio bezel that I want to use. Well, I guess I got one I can just throw in it for the meantime. Dash vents, on the other hand, that's something I need to look for. I got them stashed away in bubble wrap somewhere. Hopefully I got a full set. A little dusty, it'll do the trick. I still haven't put any of the clamshell or any of the bottom side trims or HVAC down there. Main reason being is because I need to find an ignition to put in this thing. So there are probably two more things that I want to finish up here with this car before we call it a day. I reckon uh, we may as well go ahead and slap this fender back on. I think this in itself will start to make this car look a lot more like a car again. What I like to do with already painted fenders, as you see, there's that paint mark right there. Just line that washer paint mark up while you tighten it down. That will help you get it aligned roughly back where it was. It's looking good already. Just need to uh, bolt down the bottom, obviously. Oh yeah, we actually have bolts down here. This was the first car I've ever had with removable bolts. Like that. Now we're in business. Let's make sure the door clears. All right, money. And do so with the last couple bolts. All right, well, that's it. Just kidding. We got one more thing that's really gonna finish this thing off. If you use your hood prop rod to help you out, you really need to make sure that you grab this corner because if not, it'll flip up and odds are it's going to land on your windshield. Ask me how I know. Now line up your hinge alignments with the paint match on your hood and you should line your hood up pretty evenly. Now, will it shut? <laughs> yeah! Well, that's super exciting. Really starting to look complete again, especially once that nose panel's mounted. Get us a bumper on here. <laughs> I know it's still dusty and looks like crap, but 
we're making progress honestly i think that's going to wrap up the video you guys really all i'm left to now is just completing the underside oh uh, my light died i've currently still got to finish this wheel well looks like i got it a lot better than i recall finishing it we've got all the three other ones done this side's fully stripped need to strip the other side the trans tunnel and potentially the rear area so that's going to be my uh, main priority the next couple of days and let's hurry up and uh not really hurry but let's get this thing done let's get it sent over to the body shop for a trade and let's get our slick top done sorry for a kind of repetitive thing i feel like i'm just always putting z's back together in a way and sorry if you guys are sick of it but it is what it is if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to drop a like and subscribe down below stay tuned for more content we will catch you guys in the next one peace